Welcome to my second Scribus tutorial. In this tutorial I'm going to show you how to make a straightforward poster using Scribus. When you open Scribus this is the screen that should greet you. In tutorial 1 I already set these preferences so we can go ahead and begin with our first page. On my page the grid is showing. If yours is not it's simply view show grid here. I'm going to first of all define some areas on my page using the text box tool. I'm going to first of all define the area that will be my heading and then I'm going to define a further two areas which will be columns of text with some images dotted in as well. One. don't worry too much if they're not e exactly perfect um, it's easy to adjust them later okay. alright before starting this tutorial I had a search on the internet I found myself a couple of images I plan to use and I created a text file with the text that I plan to use also taken from the internet the images shown here both have transparent backgrounds I've already put them through GIMP and created transparent backgrounds. Um, that's something you can easily Google to find out how to do if you want to make your images have transparent backgrounds. It just means I can set a page background color um, and the images still look good. Okay, to start with, I just need this text file. So let's take the title. I'm going to copy that, Control C, and I could paste directly into the text box here, but that can actually create problems at times. The correct way is to use this tool, the story editor. I open this up and it looks a bit scary, but actually it's only scary because it offers such a great range of options once you get used to it. For now, we're set on no style, and that means I'll get Ubuntu regular font at 12 point. It doesn't really matter because I can change all of this later. So, control V, paste it in, and go for the tick here which means update the text frame done doesn't look particularly great but it's done so with this text box still selected what I'm going to do is open the properties dialog and you could do this just by F2 okay it's something that really needs to be open all of the time you might already have it open if you close scribus with it open it opens again next time there's a series of different tabs on this I need the text tab and with the win uh, with this text box selected the handle showing any changes I make will apply to everything in it center larger and I could change the font if I liked but here it doesn't show me uh, what the font will look like if I want to know what the font will look like I go into extras here and use font preview nice little function in here I can actually I could just use the text that's there or I can put in the actual text I'm going to use and then click in the fonts and use the arrow keys to find different fonts okay I'm just gonna go with something fairly simple let's see da, da, da. I haven't got the world's greatest range of fonts on this computer as you can see that will do me for now I click append to apply it there's my text, let me just try that again, I don't seem to have appended that let's try a different one, there you go, you see it change alright, obviously that's not in the center vertically but actually I'm going to leave it there for now and I'll show you how I'll fix that later on ok, back to the text, let's get the text in copy, click on the text box, move to the story editor, paste it in check mark ok great text in now I want that text to, to go to the bottom of this box and flow straight into this next box to do that I need to select the first box selected already use this tool up here which is link text frames and just click in the second box and you'll see with that big black arrow they're now connected ok the next thing I want to do is to make the text somewhat larger to fill much more of that space 
Um, but I want to make sure that any changes I make to text size apply to both boxes. To do that, I need to move to the Select Item tool, hold down Shift, and click in the box that isn't selected at the moment. They're now both selected. Now go to the Text tab and increase the size and we'll see it increases everywhere. Uh, I'll go with that for a moment. I'm going to add some images so they're going to take up some space anyway. Okay. Take the image tool, insert my first image. I'm going to uh, draw a little box up here and then I need to right click and choose get image to get the image that I want. In this case it's that image there. Okay, the image is now sitting there in, in the, the, the image frame and I can I can alter that image frame, I can move it around of course, I can make it larger and I can make it smaller. The problem is that when I when I do that the image doesn't rescale to match the size of the box. To cure that one we need to go to the image tab and click scale to frame size. Now it will automatically scale with the frame. Okay, So I'm going to pop it back in the corner there. You've probably spotted the, the, the rather larger problem and that's that the, the text doesn't go around the image. To solve that one I move to shape and I choose text flows around frame. Okay, And I can of course resize now. Um, the text actually is very close to this image. With this image it doesn't really matter but with some images it might. And if I, But if I pull out the right hand side I can actually pad the text away from the image. Okay, That may be something you need to do. Let me see. Okay, I think I'm going to go with that and leave that there for now. Uh, back to the image frame. This is going to be a much larger image so here we go. Right click, get image and that's going to be this cartoon. Pop it in. Again what I need to do is go to image and choose scale to frame size to make it fit correctly, go to shape and choose text flows around frame. Okay now the text is running out of the bottom here so obviously my frame's a little bit too big. Uh, let me see, I've got text disappearing so I've got to make my image smaller until, until everything can fit properly, let me see. Either that or of course I could make the text smaller. Uh, let me see, does that work? Yes, but I want that in a different position. I want it lower down. Okay. That works for me. Alright. So what we could do is just have a look at this. File. And print preview. Let's have a look. Yeah. Not too bad. Not exactly colourful though. Um, let's see what else might we do. I think we might have a coloured box for our heading here. Pretty traditional thing to do. So I'm going to choose a shape. I'm going to draw that shape up the top here. And there you go, I have a black box. Well, I can come down to colours, choose a different colour. Um, that's on the fill setting. On the line setting, I could choose a different colour. I'm going to go for a different shade and then make the line a bit fatter on the line tab at the moment one point I'm gonna make it four points okay now of course at the moment that that is over the top of our text what I want to do is to move it down a few levels right click level lower to bottom and there you go my text now over the top and then I'm just gonna move the text down to be in the center of my box Okay, uh, I think that's my uh, simple little poster just about finished. So what I need to do now is to save it. Um, and I have a folder on my desktop that I've been working in, Miser Files, so we'll, we'll go in there. Um, let's give it a more sensible name. Miser. That's uh, .sla. This is the standard format for Scribus documents. Now that's great, uh, so long as you're sharing with people who are using Scribus. Um, but what I recommend you do is once you've saved it in Scribus format, which you must so you can edit it again later, then you save another copy as PDF. 
the default settings should be fine if you follow tutorial 1 um, click on save and then what we can do is have a little look at that PDF file okay so we could send that by email we could print it out very simple to do I hope you found the tutorial useful. We'll be back again soon with a few more tutorials, I hope.